If you think this is Windows 11, you're wrong. I know, it looks like Windows and feels like Windows, but it's not. This is, in fact, a Linux distribution, Ubuntu to be precise. And this might just be the world's most dangerous Linux distribution. I cannot quite understand the appeal of Linux distros that try to imitate Windows, but according to my research, there is a market for such distros and Ubuntu, as you can see, takes the crown. But it has a dark past. But before we get into all that messy business, let's take a look at this Ubuntu, because there is something to be seen here. Ubuntu looks shockingly similar to Windows 11. If you do a side-by-side -side comparison, we'd actually have to hunt for differences, not similarities. The bottom bar, desktop layout, the icons, even the default wallpaper, straight up copied. This is asking to be sued, but the developers have done phenomenal work cloning the UI. There's some talent here, I won't deny that. And this actually feels smoother and cleaner than Windows itself for some reason. Take a look at the start menu here. This is straight out of Redmond. Look at the file manager. It too looks like the Windows file explorer. This is actually KDE Plasma desktop that's been themed to look like Windows. And by themed, I mean the next level of theming. Obviously, there are giveaways if you look keenly, but it's easy to get fooled. But of course, the intention is not to fool anybody here, but to provide an alternative to Windows, a smooth transition to Linux. At least I hope so. A distro that looks similar to Windows and behaves similar to Windows will have a huge advantage for people who are looking to switch to Linux, especially if they are new to Linux, because it removes a huge portion of that initial friction. But Ubuntu developers are trading in dangerous territories here, to say the least. They are using the Windows logo, Windows wallpapers, Windows icons. That's copyrighted material and this can be seen as an attempt to impersonate something that it's not. They even call themselves Windows Ubuntu. They are affiliated with neither Ubuntu nor Windows. And as I said, this system can be mistaken for Windows 11. If Ubuntu comes up on the big guy's radar, things can go south and get ugly. Ubuntu developers, friendly advice, trust me. You should give it a long thought. It might be a cool personal project, but you are distributing it. So yeah, rethink. But it's not just about the looks. Ubuntu comes loaded with features. Windows features. Firstly, Ubuntu lets you install and work with Windows apps and games using Wine. Wine is a translation layer that lets you install and run Windows applications on Linux. Wine can be installed on any Linux distribution. It's just pre-installed here. While I think that Wine is like magic, I mean Windows apps on Linux with almost native performance, come on, if that's not magic, what is? But not everything works. It works great if it works, and some things can be hit or miss. So Wine cannot be a 100% replacement to Windows, and it applies to Ubuntu as well. Then you have Microsoft Copilot here. Of course, this is a web wrapper, but this is a cool touch. Let's go ahead and talk to it. Will Microsoft sue Ubuntu? Oh, Microsoft has no plans to sue Ubuntu. They are in fact support you. Carry on guys, do bootleg Apple next. Silly me. Then we get Microsoft Edge here. Edge is available natively on Linux, so that's installed here. The settings app too just nails it. While it's quite different from what Windows 11 has, the design language actually sells it. And the final nail is this refresh button. Booyah! This refresh button is as Windows as it can get. So what I'm trying to get to is, this is not bootleg Windows. Ubuntu is more Windows than Windows itself. This makes the legit Windows 11 feel bootleg. But we know the truth. Alright, let's get serious. Ubuntu is very controversial in the Linux community and for multiple reasons. Let's go by them and for this section, I've created a unique points table. We are going to divide the failings of Ubuntu into sins and blunders. Helps us keep track. Let's jump in. Firstly, no one has seemed to notice this, but Ubuntu is not open source. Yeah, it's based on Ubuntu, which follows the GNU General Public License version 2, and any software based on it must and should be made open source. This is not optional. It's absolutely required to do so. But I don't see Ubuntu's GitHub. This is a sin. Not cool at all. Now let's dig up a bit here. Ubuntu was formerly known as Linux FX. It's technically a different distro, but there's a story here. So Linux FX2 was the same Windows plus Linux experience, but slightly different. 
it came with a different icon theme. Just like Ubuntu, the distro itself was cool and it didn't really use any of the copyrighted material from Windows like the logo and wallpapers and such. So it was just fine. And it had a paid version too, just like Ubuntu does. And what did the paid version get you? Nobody knows. Ubuntu Pro or a professional key is advertised on the Ubuntu website just as it was on the Linux FX website. But there's no information about what you get with the professional key. And the free version doesn't strip out any features as well. And people did buy this. You pay $35 and get a key which you could activate to get Linux FX Pro. I guess if you really like Linux FX or Ubuntu, you found value in it and would want to contribute to its development and make it sustainable, you could get the paid version. Nothing wrong in it. Now let's get technical. Obviously, there will be a server to validate the entered keys and a database to store the activation information. Obviously. Kernel.eu, an advanced technical blog, did an audit on LinuxFX and showed that LinuxFX had extremely poor security practices. And a lot of user data like IP addresses of all the computers LinuxFX was installed on and the email addresses of paying customers could be downloaded with just 4 commands. It's not even hacking. The info was there, just sitting to be downloaded from their MySQL server. Damn it LinuxFX guys, you are supposed to open source the code, not open source your database and user info. For someone who's new to building software, which I assume LinuxFX developers were at that moment, backend can be challenging. Apart from building the software, the backend servers, setting up databases, APIs can be an entirely different field of work. I get that. So I would be willing to call this a blunder, a big rookie one at that. But when user data, especially IP addresses and emails are concerned, it becomes a sin. And for all the people learning software development, if backend is not your best suit, just use serverless. Superbase, Firebase, AppWrite, these eliminate the need for writing APIs and come with best-in-class data security out of the box. If Linux FX developers would have used something like this, none of this mess would have happened in the first place. But things like these do happen. You have to be willing to make mistakes, take responsibility and learn from them in software development and life in general. That's fine. But it gets worse. The credentials for connections were stored in plain text on the LinuxFX website, unencrypted and on an unauthenticated HTTP endpoint that literally anybody could access. Yeah, no comments. But LinuxFX developers' response and attitude is what really gets me. Their first action was not to correct the mistake from the backend and make it more secure, even when pointed out to them but to block you from getting to them, and a slipshod lackluster effort at that. Then they went on to name call kernel.eu for exposing them. Yeah, who does that, kids? And even on Reddit, the response of the developer was very nonchalant and carefree. He said things like these happen, no biggie. Yeah, they do happen and when they do, people take responsibilities. People get fired, there's carnage. I'm not saying you shouldn't make mistakes. I feel that the developer was young and when young, everybody makes mistakes. That's fine. I'm a big fan of mistakes. In fact, you're actually doing something wrong if you're not doing mistakes in life. But you also got to own up to them and promise to make things better. At times, that's all you can do and that's all you need to do. You don't get to tell people to chill. And this is what makes Ubuntu dangerous. This attitude. The developer doesn't have a malicious intent to hurt others. They didn't want to steal your info and Ubuntu doesn't steal your data. The whole fiasco has obviously put a bad light on the developer of LinuxFX and even as someone with malicious intent. The guy doesn't mean any harm, but he is careless. Careless with others' data. So thank you, but no thank you. Fast forward a few years, LinuxFX or WindowsFX has been rebranded into Ubuntu. Who knows, maybe because of the whole fiasco itself. Yeah, it's the same thing. But all the issues seem to have been fixed and the world goes on. The theme is a bit different, but Ubuntu is pretty much the same system as Linux FX. Should you use Ubuntu? I'm not gonna pretend to know the answer to this question. I've given you the details. You can make your own decision. But I am gonna reiterate that there was no malicious intent. Ubuntu or Linux FX never came with malware or spyware installed. No, not at all but I did sense a lack of disregard for user data protection. And for me, that's bad, not something I can tolerate. So for me, Ubuntu is a no. 
I am gonna admit one thing. Ubuntu developers or developer has shown a strong motivation to build something here. There is intent and the work has been done to back it up. Hustle. The developer set out to build a Windows clone, a Windows lookalike based on Linux. Looking at this, I must say this is a job well done. There are moments where this feels more polished than Windows 11 itself. I am gonna give the developer credit where it's due and let me tell you, a lot of work has gone into it. I am sure it has been a learning experience for the developer. As young developers, we need to have humility if we want to learn and grow in this field. That's a prerequisite. We need to have the humility to identify and learn when the moment presents itself. So for Ubuntu developers, it's time to take action. Reach out to people, get Ubuntu audited by community members, let people see that it is safe to use. And yeah, open source Ubuntu, open source it. Include your repackaging methodology and stuff, GPL too buddy. For me, Linux and open source are all about learning, growing, building and being part of a community. Sure, there were mistakes made. Everybody makes mistakes and everybody deserves second chances. The community has done its job of creating awareness and protecting people's data with Linux FX. I don't believe it's fair to crucify someone just because they built a MySQL server using a YouTube video. Yeah, as I said, it's not the end of the road. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off and earn back that trust one day at a time. Ubuntu developers, the ball is in your court. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also turn on the notifications so that you're the first one to know when anything major happens in the world of Linux. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up too. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. By the way, Linux Mint 22 has rolled out and it's got some crazy new things going on. It's the next major release of the fan favorite Linux distro. I made a video on that, definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next X, signing out.